Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The final game of the Week 9 Simulation Football League State or game takes place from the Sooner State here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Andy Hamilton along with Stephen Monex for the Florida Storm here in town to take on the Tulsa Desperados. Stephen, how you doing tonight? Doing awesome, man. Can't wait to get this game going. You know, we've got two teams really going in opposite directions here. Tulsa Desperados come in on a uh, winning th uh, three, uh, excuse me, four out of the last five. Florida on a four-game losing streak looking to get off the snipe. And the Florida Storm, who as uh, some people who are new to the Simulation Football League might not know, three-time SFL champions um, coming off a loss. They're only their second loss in the playoffs last season are uh, struggling a little bit, but still, Steven, are as dangerous as ever. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, certainly, um, it's a team that you can never sleep on, especially towards the end the end of games. You know, if you keep this one close, you know that their quarterback, Ron Cocker, Mr. Cool, is going to find a way to get them to win. So if you're Tulsa, you want to get out in front of these Florida Stormers uh, as, as far as possible. 1,400 miles separate these two franchises here in the Dome in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Stephen, one of the last times I was in this building, Corey Jones had a walk-off Hail Mary touchdown in week one to beat the Chicago Wildcats. We'll have to see if heroics are needed or whether the Tulsa Desperados can beat the Storm on their own. We are underway here from Tulsa. Return will come out across the 20 yard line and they will set up shop first and 10 from the Tulsa 22. And that is where Deacon Nickens will lead this offense out. Yeah, Deacon Nickens comes into this game, 2,200 passing yards, uh, completing 61% of his passes, 13 touchdowns, 26 interceptions. So double that touchdown rating there with the interceptions. He has Sanzo Robinson, the dynamic halfback, in the backfield along with the fullback, Javier Vasquez. Nickens, though, will throw on first down. Out route. Oh, oh, how did he catch that at the 27? There was some magic in the last game, and Corey Jones pulled a rabbit out of his hat on that one. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea how Jones was able to pluck that ball out of the air with the defender in front of him. Just an amazing display of concentration and Nickens really lasered the ball in there with confidence despite the defender being in front of his receiver. I tell you what, Stephen, that was like me reaching into the cookie jar because that, that pass disappeared into Corey Jones's hand just as fast as a cookie would have disappeared in my hands. First carry for Sanzo will lose a yard, and let's go over the offense. Deacon Nickens leads the way in his fifth season. You just met Sanzo Robinson. Jacob McCall, Corey Jones, and Mike Osai are the receivers. Anthony Mosley is the tight end, and Lonzi Champion, the kicker for the Tulsa Desperados, rounds out this offensive unit, and at 5-3, and three, they clearly know what they're doing. Nickens, short drop on second down, and he gets dropped himself. It'll br bring them back to a third and 16. Yeah, Alessandro Tamailo, uh, actually, there with the sack. That's going to be his fifth on the season. You know, uh, he combined with Alex Dominguez, big sexy, a guy that's been the defensive player of the season here in the SFL a couple of times. Uh, they are disastrous there on the outside. Tomeo, a draft pick for this Florida Storm team in the draft and a wonderful person on the boards to meet if you have not. Deacon Nickens pumps once. Oh, hit from behind. Barely got that one away. That was Alex Dominguez, who is uh, pairing for Tomeo. And uh, these two are as dangerous as it comes, and they show off right there on third down. Yeah, big sexy coming in with 10 and a half sacks. Nearly had another one right there. And this is something that this Tulsa line... Uh, is going to need to protect their quarterback. Nickens has only been sacked 14 times, so they've done a good job. But here it causes a fourth down in this punt. Snap is away. Florida will result to line up for the return, not come after it. Here is the return. It'll get a couple yards, and they will line up at the 37. Well, Ron Cochran uh, is a quarterback for Florida that... Steven, throughout his career, has looked stellar like a Hall of Fame quarterback. This year, though, has struggled a little bit. Yeah, really known for his accuracy, Andy. Coming into this game, 63%, completing 63% of his passes, 
The unfortunate part is the nine touchdowns, 20 interception line. Just something we're not used to seeing from the six-year veteran. And they are going to line up in a two-back set. No halfback for this team, but J.W. Doyle, the fullback, gets the carry there, and he will pick up six. A threat, Stephen, when used correctly. Yeah, and you know what? I've been surprised at how much Florida's actually been kind of turning to their, their running back, Connor Weston, as a receiver out of the backfield and kind of not leaned on Doyle so much, but maybe they'll change their game plan here tonight. Indeed, we will see it. Two and six, nothing is off the table for Florida to try. Here is Cochran, short drop, will dump it out of the backfield there off the right side. That is Weston there who will get to the 49. And let's go over this offensive unit. Ron Cochran, the quarterback, in his sixth season. J.W. Doyle, the fullback. Stephen Bush, the receiver, along with Robert Merrill and Optimus Klein. E.J. Minson is the tight end. And Ethan Sneed, the kicker, rounds out this scoring offense for the Florida Storm. They will line up on first and 10. Gun ace trips with two receivers to the bottom of the screen. They will dump a little out route there with plenty of room. Optimus Klein has the first down and steps out of bounds at the 38. Beautiful play. Well, Andy, Optimus Klein was so wide open on that play. So much respect being paid to him by this Tulsa secondary. But he was really uh, there just a little... Nice little out route there and caught the defense on their heels. And uh, there wasn't anybody five, eight yards even close to it. Klein and Robert Merrill have both played for this Storm team for seven seasons straight. Veterans in this league. That throw complete across the middle to Stephen Bush. He is playing in his first season here in Florida, coming over uh, by way of Tulsa. Yeah, and threatening already to hit the 1,000-yard mark. Coming into this game, 943 receiving yards off 61 receptions. Really been the top receiver, uh, if you're not including the end zone, which the tight end, E.J. Minton, actually leads this team in receiving touchdowns. Second, and they need an inch. Let's see what they do here in the shotgun. Cochran to pass. Out route is caught with plenty of room for the first down. That is Bush again. First down to the 20. Yeah, and this is just a 50x spot play where they take their outside receiver. He fakes like a slant in and then goes out on a little short route, and it just kind of loses the defense, allows a, a more wide-open window for your, your quarterback to throw to. Just an excellent call in the perfect situation. Robert Garrett Jr. on the stats, keeping up us honest up here in the truck. Ron Cochran, a perfect 4 for 4 to start. Cochran going to launch one to the end zone, and it's caught! Touchdown, Florida Storm! They strike first with a big throw to the tight end, E.J. Minson. And they make it look so easy, Andy. Cochran here, no pressure. He's been sacked 21 times so far this season. You wouldn't know it by the type of protection they're giving him tonight. And he just has all day to find his six foot five, 255 pound tight end wide open in the middle of the end zone. I tell you what, Stephen, EJ is going to have to change his name to EZ because that was one of the quickest and most smooth drives I've seen from this Florida Storm team as they get down the field in a hurry and make it six with a potential to make it seven nothing. Kick on the way, and it is good straight through the uprights there from Ethan Sneed. And I mean, what a drive from Florida to start. Yeah, six plays, 60 yard drive, ends with a 20 yard passing touchdown. And Ron Cochran on the drive, a perfect five of five for 55, 50, excuse me, 54 yards and that touchdown. And so they will line up to kick it away at two and six, heavily underdogged here on the road, but so far leading the way. Ooh, coming back for the return is Charles Ball. He's dangerous as a return man. He will angle it off to the left side. A nice return from Ball out to the 28. Uh, and especially, Stephen, when you consider he was retreating to catch that. Yeah, he has been an absolute beast the moment that he stepped on the field here in the SFL and, and really made his name known uh, as a special teams returner. Just someone that, that the SFL kickers wanted to try to avoid, if at all possible. Deacon Nickens leads them back out. He came over from Oklahoma City in the offseason. Now playing for Tulsa here. We'll take a shotgun snap. Going to heave one down the middle. It's caught. And that is a good play down there. All the way to the 40. I was trying not to call it too soon to make sure that 
<laughs> I didn't jump the gun, but Aaron King getting involved here early. Yeah, they caught the uh, Florida Storm playing man defense, and it's just one on one. And Aaron King just able to beat the defender. Look at the separation he's able to get, just giving his quarterback a huge window to get that ball in. And uh, Nickens just does a good job lacing it in there right on the numbers. King working on Christian Paul, the generic cornerback. So that was two generics uh, working against each other, Stephen. And the offensive player got the uh, got the plus one there all the way up to the 40. Nickens on a seven-step drop. Going to chuck this one short. That one is complete outside. Sanzo Robinson involved in the passing game. And let's go to the Florida defense for you. Alex Dominguez and Alessandro Tomahello are the defensive ends. Nicholas Warner and Frank Champion are the linebackers. Ryan Davidson and Evan Carroll, the cornerbacks. Ryan Tobin, Jeff Malinishin, Andrew Francis are the safeties. And Marcus Agrippa boots the ball away for Florida. Haven't seen him tonight as their first drive went well. 7-0. The Storm on top of Tulsa. Storm wearing blue. Tulsa wearing green. Here is Nickens. Out route wide open on the outside. That is enough for the first down to Jacob. Or no, excuse me. That was Mike Osai with the catch to the 29. Yeah, and Mike Osai, this is his eighth season here in the league. His second season here with Tulsa. One of the most consistent wide receivers the SFL has ever seen. It's coming into this game with 37 receptions for 741 yards, uh, eight touchdowns, and averaging 20 yards a catch. Shotgun look for Nickens going to throw. Nickens going to take a shot on a corner route, tipped up and picked. Coming back the other way, the interception is made there by Andrew Francis. The strong safety takes it away for Florida. Yeah, and Francis just does just, just a really good job here of just uh, being – the uh, beneficiary of this tipped ball by his teammate, but able to, to bring that in pretty easy and get the turnover. The Storm up by seven. Play some defense, take the ball away. We'll be right back here. It's the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports. Back here in Tulsa, two back set for Florida. They give to J.W. Doyle. He will pick up merely a yard. And let's take a look at the last time these two teams met, a 38-13 victory. The Storm then were in Alaska. Ron Cochran, an incredible day, Stephen, 43 of 48. Yeah, and having that type of efficiency early in this game would just not bode well for Tulsa. Uh, but these are two completely different teams from way back then, and I expect a different outcome. We will see here. Second and nine, a dump out to Weston on this right-hand side. No, excuse me, I believe that's J.W. Doyle who will get out to the 12, and we will take a look at this Tulsa defensive unit. Led by Espen Rial, Chris Andrews, Berto DeMora, and Jaden Swift, along with K.T. Slayer on the line. D.J. Majesty and Rael are the linebackers. Nate Heslep, along with Sim Franco Jr. are the cornerbacks, and Barry Barkley and Charles, middle name Wee Ball, are the safeties. Three receivers wide for Cochran on third and five. Got to float one. That's caught. Hauled in at the 30, and then he pays the price for it. But what a catch by Stephen Bush. Yeah, great catch by Bush, but really it's the quarterback, Ron Cochran, who just really knows how to take something off his pitches and knows when to dial up the fastball. But here... More finesse than power, able to really uh, dot that right between the ones on, on Stephen Bush's jersey. Well, and trusting your receiver to get in front of that ball and not let the defense take it away, can't understate how important that is uh, for a receiving threat and a quarterback to be on the same page. 426 to go in the first. Here is an out route there to Optimus Klein. Klein turns up field. Steven, we saw that out route once. We see it again, and it works beautifully. 
Yeah, clearly Tulsa is comfortable giving up that kind of route to Optimus Klein. The ones that they don't want to give up are those deep corner routes and post routes, which he can absolutely change a game with. 7-0 Florida on top. The Florida franchise located in Fort Lauderdale. For those of you who may be new to the simulation football league, two receivers top of the screen. They'll flip it out of the backfield to Weston. Weston will gain two yards. For those of you viewing for the first time, what exactly are you watching? The Simulation Football League is the world's first controllerless eSport, which is allowing you, the viewer, to participate in all the action without a controller in your hands and, Stephen, without even having to leave your home. Visit simulation.football on your web browser for details on how to get started with the team and in the league. Second and eight for Florida from their own 45. Pump fake from Cochran. Tipped up and incomplete. The defensive play they there made by DJ Majesty. Yeah, Majesty usually uh, used to make tackles, averaging 11 tackles a game. But here does a nice job in coverage. Just gets his big paw up there and knocks it down. Majesty in his sixth season actually played for this Florida franchise when they were in Alaska, now taking them on as a member of the Desperados. Third and eight, and Iceman Gervin44 in the chat reminds us that Majesty played for them in season 12. I beat you to it by just a second. <laughs> Ron Cochran in the gun, gonna throw here. Stands across the middle and picked off! Oh, what a leaping grab made for the Desperados! The pick goes the other way! And this is just an all slants play where they're sending all the receivers to the middle of the field. And the defender, number 27, TJ Covington, is just sitting there. And I just don't think Cochran saw him, tried to get it to one of those middle receivers, and it's picked off. Wow, an incredible interception there. I mean, I mean Stephen, you ever see that from a, a generic player who's not making the big money? Uh, you know what? They will surprise you. We've had generic players absolutely make Super Bowl-level plays in this championship game and beyond. Tulsa getting the ball back here. Nickens under pressure, and he will get dropped. Big Sexy again, his second of the game, and it's a loss of 10. And they're going to have to find some kind of solution to both of these really powerful defensive ends that uh, the Florida Storm have. I mean, if this is the early indication, it's going to be a long night for Dick and Nickens. Nickens still, though, completing 66% of his passes so far. He will throw again from the 47. Going to take a deep shot, and it's caught! Oh, what a corner route! Nickens put it on a line, and Jacob McCall was able to answer the call. Well, Nickens is an absolute gunslinger, a five-year uh, season veteran here in this league. He's unafraid to take chances and... This is just a great pass. Just the receiver on the open on the outside in between two defenders. Nickens unafraid to try and get it to him. Nickens was working on Jeff Malinishin out there. Malinishin at 6'2", 212 was just a little too slow. And McCall able to get by him there at 6'200", the second round pick for Tulsa. Here is Nickens. An out route there is caught on the outside underneath. And that will be a six-yard pickup to the Florida 27 as we go back and forth. Corey Jones on the catch there. Andy, kind of, I, I kind of feel like the momentum really shifted here. You know, with Alaska scoring first and uh, this home crowd being kind of quiet, they just really needed something to get that momentum in their direction. That interception seems to have done the trick. Yeah, absolutely. I would 100% agree with you there, Stephen. Momentum is, if not towards Tulsa, at least in the middle. Hand off here. Oh, Robinson clattered in the backfield. A whole host of Storm members were there to make the play. Yeah, certainly uh, the Storm there, Davidson in particular, sniffed that run out. They were in that heavy run formation, right. that strong power eye running towards the tight ends there. And uh, boy, it just uh, it did not look good. And uh, that's really the first run that we've seen Sanzo run, uh, Robinson make in this game. Yeah, negative yards on his only run tonight. Not a good start for Robinson. Three receivers wide. Nickens, five-step drop, gets rid of it as he's hit. Oh, somehow is able to line up Jacob McCall, and this rookie may be having his coming out party, Stephen. Yeah, honestly, you know, sometimes you get lucky 
And I think the pressure right in the face of Nickens, he just throws this one up for anyone to get. And McCall finds himself in the perfect situation to get that ball. But certainly where the ability comes from is the fact that he's able to stay in bounds, make sure his feet in bounds, and lets the ref see him catch that ball with both hands. Here's the handoff up the middle. Robinson will gain no yards. I tell you what, Stephen, Jacob McCall sent us a tweet uh, literally one hour ago that said he had 18 catches, 216 yards, and one touchdown. It says, I'm doing what I can. Got so much untapped potential, I'm trying to show the whole league. Well, I tell you what, he is coming out and putting on a show for us here early in this one. Totally agree. Keep going, young man. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Robinson, the lone back in the backfield. Four down linemen, two linebackers for the Storm. Nickens going to dump it off to Robinson. Plenty of room off the left-hand side. Robinson beats one man to the pylon. Touchdown, Tulsa Desperados. Take that baby to the crib. And this is a part of Sandra Robinson's game that we've seen in the past from this four-year, four-season veteran that I think Tulsa should be doing more of. Passing to Robinson out of the backfield. Coming into the game, only had 26 total receptions. That's average just about uh, two or three a game uh, so far. So this is an, they've already thrown to him twice here in this game and once for a score. Certainly a part of his game that he has, that he possesses, they need to use more of. Robinson, an incredible runoff to the left side. And, and the scheming there, Stephen, to get him open in that flat, I mean – to put all the receivers at this near side of the field and then toss it out to the far side, just genius from Tulsa. Extra point is good from Lonzi Champion. We are knotted up at seven. If you were thinking about changing the channel, don't you dare. It's seven all here in the Simulation Football League Week 9. We'll be right back on 11 Sports. Back here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, population of over 400,000. We are here in the Dome, and Stephen, after that touchdown, it feels like all 400,000 of them are here in the seats tonight. This crowd is rocking and ready to try and improve to 6-3. and three. They've tied it up against this Florida Storm, and now they will put the defense back out on the field. Last time they were out, an interception. Yeah, and actually, you know, I think both teams have done a good job of recovering from each of their takeaways that they're able to get. And in the case of Tulsa, really able to use it, uh, that interception as a momentum shifter. And, and you know what, uh, I, I some another great series here from Florida to turn the tide their way. Five wide for Ron Cochran. He will throw. Pressure coming. Has to get rid of it. Unloads to this right side. It's caught. Turning up field for the first down is Stephen Bush. We've called his name a couple times tonight, Mr. Mullinex, and he is putting in work. Yeah, just uh, really powered his way there to a first down. Able to, again, take advantage of those short out routes. But in this case, Bush really just has... Uh, the speed and the power combined to get past the first defender, get past the first down mark. Twins to the bottom of this formation. Seven, eight in the box here for Tulsa. One in the backfield. Cochran going to dump it off this near side to Bush. Bush again, another seven yards there. He really has been putting in a shift. It's Stephen Bush versus Jacob McCall so far tonight. And you know what? I've seen this from Florida before, Andy. They they kind of lull you to sleep with these, you know, uh, giving the giving and taking what the the defense gives kind of plays, and then they strike for something deep down the field. Twins to the top of the formation. 4-3 look out of Tulsa. Here is Cochran going to throw. Dumps it out of the backfield there. Caught. Nice grab through the middle, and it is going to be a first down catch for Mark Myers. Yeah, and a nice little play design there. Uh, the second tight end uh, actually is uh, lines up on the line, and then he just right off the line explodes off it on a kind of slant route, and he's just wide open. So great play design, great play call. 
And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. Steven, we went back and forth. Momentum swung, and now it is all knotted up. This is the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports and for the fans, and you should stick with us. We'll be right back. Andy Hamilton along with Stephen Mullinex here calling the game for you on 11 Sports and for the fans. This is the Simulation Football League. If you're watching for the first time, it's the world's first controllerless eSport and one of the only sports that is still 100% operational, and we are very grateful for that. Ron Cochran, short drop, dunks underneath to Stephen Bush who fumbles the ball. Ball's on the turf, and luckily for Florida, they are able to fall on it. Yeah, dangerous, dangerous there. Is uh, my Bush there with the uh, fumble gets hit, and that was that was indeed a fumble. He did make a football play after making the catch, and lucky to get on top of that one and continue the drive. Oh my, your heart just kind of jumps into your throat mm. whenever that happens, whether it's your team or the other team. Here is Cochran going to dump it out of the backfield there on the outside to Weston, and Weston will pick up another couple. It'll make it third and I believe two. No, third and one. Well, Cochran completing, we're actually putting on a pretty good show here, completing 13 of 15 passes, excuse me, 14 of 16 passes for 120 yards. But his two right. incompletions and interception came on the previous series, but uh, showing no signs of being uh, worried about that here on this series. And for the most part, they've thrown some pretty safe balls, Stephen, yeah. some good yeah. scheming on the routes to try and get receivers open. Now in the gun, Four down linemen for Tulsa. They will bring four, and here is Cochran firing down. Ooh, dangerous pass. Charles Ball was in the area, and that is not the guy you want to take a shot at. Well, that might be the reason why they're they're keeping it safe when they've tried something a little bit more risky, more down the field. Uh, it either seemingly gets tipped or uh, they are nearly intercepted. Fourth and one from the 43. Ten minutes to go in the second, and the offense still out on the field. Only back in the backfield is Weston. J.W. Doyle sidelined for this play. Two receivers top of the screen, two tight ends to the bottom of your formation. 4-3, looking and offsides. Ron Cochran throws. It won't matter what happens. That one's almost picked off, but it'll be a first down for Florida as the veteran Ron Cochran pulls the hard count and gets the Desperados to jump. Yeah, just an absolute mental mistake. I think there's, there's no way, <laughs> there is no way that Florida runs that ball tries to get that first down in my opinion 
you mainly because you don't see the fullback J.W. Doyle there in the backfield. If he's in the backfield, then maybe you try to power it through uh, the line. But uh, with Connor Weston back there, you're almost guaranteed if it's going to be an attempt, it's going to be a pass. And you're almost guaranteed there on fourth down and one like that, it's not even going to be attempted. So one thing Boy, to consider. Hurts. One thing to consider, Stephen. Tulsa has four rookies on that defensive line, all playing in their first season. This is their, their ninth game of their careers for most of them. Uh, KT Slayer playing in his first game. Out route there is no good, but nice job of the veteran Ron Cochran to draw them off sides there on that last play. Um, a real veteran move. Yeah, and speaking, you know, talking about veterans, Optimus Klein is usually a showstopper there on the sidelines. Uh, really had to slow himself down a lot in order for Cochran to get him the ball, and it almost like he waited forever for it. And found himself out of bounds by the time it did get there. Cochran in the shotgun, three receivers wide. Tulsa showing pressure. They will bring four. Here is Cochran on the corner round, caught. Beautiful throw to EJ Minson. That his second catch of the game. Big one, or first one, excuse me, was a big touchdown, and that one gets him down to the 24. Well, we saw Minson, and as he has been all season, has been really a great red zone target here for Cochran, but uh, certainly probably want to get him more involved in the other parts of the field as well. I mean, he's going to use big frame like that to really give your quarterback uh, wide open windows and they're just an opportunity to lay that in the bucket and he does so perfectly. 4-2 look out of this Tulsa defense trying to get a stop here. Florida will give up the middle to J.W. Doyle and he is shouldered down. Doyle was a little bit disrespected there by D.J. Majesty. Probably some hate for the former team. Well, yeah, and, you know, rushing the football here in Florida has really become an afterthought coming into this game, only averaging just over 25 rushing yards a game. So this is really a first, uh, a, a pass first, pass second, pass third type team. They want to pass the ball, but they've got to they've got to try to get the run game involved a little bit. Out route there is caught. Interesting note about the Simulation Football League, if you're new to the league, all veteran players are free agents every single year, Stephen. Um, something you don't see in the other league as that free agency goes forward. And in this league, te players have the chance to play for whoever they want. Yeah, and that's what makes it amazing. Like this Florida team, they've got guys that have been in here, you know, on this team for seven years. They choose to stay. Cochran looking to throw, dumps it out there, caught right on the outside. I think that's Stephen Bush again. It is all the way down to the Tulsa 12, knocking on the door. And, you know, Tulsa's been giving this up all game long, and they clearly, they do not want Cochran to throw down the field and trying to discourage that. So they're giving them wide open receivers on those short out routes and hoping uh, that they're able to stop, uh, you know, in this game of that's become really paper cuts. Three wide, three three look out of Tulsa. Plenty of threes on the field. And Ron Cochran steps up, throws the back of the end zone, picked off. Dangerous ball from number three. And it's number 48, Charles Ball, who swipes it away. E looking for EJ Minton once again in the, the middle of the end zone here on this post route. But Charles Ball in perfect position there, just playing center field. Must have some baseball in his background because yeah, that was a pop fly that he came down with pretty easy. Man, what a interception really turns the tide as the Florida Storm were knocking on the door to put points on the board. Instead, we sit at 7-all, and Tulsa takes the ball away. Twins to the top of the formation here for Nickens. Nickens taking a deep shot right off the bat, has him down to the 42. Beautiful catch by Mike Osai. Yeah, no size has been doing it. For a long time in this league, just a nice little post route here in between two defenders. Really just perfectly placed there by Deacon Nickens, uh, able to catch him in stride, get him a couple extra yards because of that. So making it easy there for his wide receiver who gets so much separation on the play. First and 10 for the 42, Nickens out route there is caught, dragging the feet at midfield. Eight-yard pickup there. Nice grab by Osai again. Yeah, and this is uh, one of the more dangerous combinations in the league, and Nickens and Osai have hooked up for eight touchdowns. That's eight of the 13 that right. Nickens have thrown. They have gone to Osai. So this is a combo uh, that if you're a Tulsa fan, you'd like to see heating up. Yeah. 
Second and two from midfield. Going to give to Robinson. Robinson through two. Nice strong run from Sanzo Robinson up to the 41. And they've gone away from running Robinson in this game. Been a little bit more pass-oriented, matching, I guess, one for one what Alaska is doing. But when you see runs like this and the power and speed with which Sanzo Robinson really runs angry at times, you got to wonder, man, they've got to give this, this guy the ball more. Going to throw. Here is Nickens. Pressure coming. Pressure got to him. Amazing play there by Alex Dominguez, his third of the game. Well, the issues on the outside continue. They cannot simply contain this man. Alex Dominguez coming into this game with 10 sacks in the top five solo sack leaders this season. 10 solo sacks, excuse me, as we see the names there, Jeff Duffy uh, uh, and the rest there. Wow, what a catch there again by Osai going down the field. And, Stephen, I know you have uh, some history with Mr. Osai. He used to play for a team of yours. Yeah, the Dallas Roughnecks, uh, he was our number one wide receiver for quite some time and uh, number one guy on the field and off of it. One of the class individuals among many here in this league. 6'3", 207 here in his second season in Tulsa also played for the Baltimore franchise two in the backfield they give to Robinson right up the gut Robinson also played for the Baltimore franchise and he picked up four before Frank Champion can drag him down well the Desperados offense uh, a lot more balanced than Florida's you know coming into this game had a passing offense averaging 281 yards a game uh, on the ground they averaged nearly 100 rushing yards a game so uh, this is a good sign. Getting Robinson in the running game more involved should open up things for Nickens in the passing game. He will look to that passing game now. Check down here to Robinson. Robinson through one. Has the first down. Man, oh man, Steven. Lower the shoulder and pick it up. That's why you have to have playmakers on your team like Sanzo Robinson. You can just dump it down to him there, and he can make a play powering through a defender to get a first down for you. So, what should have been maybe just a minimal one or two yard gain actually turn you know moves the change and gives you puts you in the red zone. Offset formation will give to Robinson right up the gut. Robinson will fall forward for four yards. And now, Stephen, after the interception in the end zone, Tulsa knocking on the door. And the great thing about running the football so effectively like this is that you're, you're taking time off the clock, you're giving your defense a chance to rest and you take that Alaska offense off the field. Offset again here to this near side of the formation on second and six. Nickens gonna throw, pressure coming. Oh, dropped in the backfield again, ran right into that sack. That was Alessandro Tomaello. Yeah, this combo of defensive ends, we've talked about them all night long. And they have yet to find a solution for either one of these guys. And it's going to be an issue, especially if Nickens is having to wait for his receivers to get open and plays that take longer to develop. If I'm the offensive coordinator, I am throwing in some quick pass plays and then running the football behind Sanzo Robinson. Five wide on third and 12 at the Florida 19. Nickens alone in the shotgun will look to throw. Moves up in the pocket, gets rid of it. That one tipped and nearly intercepted. Florida was there. Ryan Davidson makes the play to force fourth down. And you can thank Alaska's defensive line for getting you in this position and making it a field goal try instead of a touchdown. Uh, they have really, at times, controlled this game, and I don't really see that changing much. Maybe some halftime adjustments can be made, but I think they're going to have to do something a little bit more in the quick passing game to try to stall that pass rush. Lonzi Champion is on from here. It'll be about a 40-yarder with 4.02 left here in the second. Low snap is corralled, and it's blocked! This one's still heading towards the uprights, but no, it is going to be short. The Florida Storm brought in and blocked the Lonzi champion kick. Wow. We stay tied at seven. Florida and Tulsa in a barn burner. We'll be right back.
back here, Tulsa, Oklahoma, the site of tonight's Week 9 finale. Week 10 will start next weekend. Three receivers wide for Cochran. Short drop out route there is caught by Stephen Bush on the boundary. Pickup of six. Or no, excuse me, Klein. And Andy, this has been an absolute tug of war of a game. I mean, this has been back and forth and back and forth. And we were talking about it in the break. Just, just so much offense taking place in this game. Yet the score is just 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, and plenty of time, too, for both teams to explode or, you know, potentially lock down their defense even more. As Florida blocks the kick, if you happen to go to the bathroom, poor timing. Cochran to throw, slinked one across the middle, tipped up and incomplete. Espen Rial, I think, was the first one to get a hand on it, and Tulsa celebrates the deflection. Yeah, the Desperados really not giving up anything in the middle. Uh, they certainly have come in here knowing there's a certain aspect of this Florida Storm offense that they want to shut down, and they have absolutely done a great job doing so. They're giving up some yardage and, and, and making Cochran look pretty good here. 75% of his passes completed so far, 18 of 24, but those have all been, as you said earlier in this game, more of those safe plays. I don't know if they can afford to play it safe here on third and fourth. Third down, three receivers wide for number three. Ron Cochran here from his own 31 with 334 left to go. Here is Cochran, pumps once, takes a deep shot down the field, caught! Oh, Stephen Bush, a spin move! Bush is all the way down to the 35, and he is on fire. Yeah, this is an absolute monster of a play. They have broken through this uh, glass ceiling that the, the Tulsa Desperados had here in the middle of the field. And it's it just Bush using really his speed to run that post route, gets that separation of those two defenders there. And then Cochran just finds them wide open in the middle of the field. Well, and looking at Ron Cochran's uh, numbers, averaging 6.5 yards per completion coming into the game, Tied for second lowest in the league. And, Steven, you see the interceptions there. Not his year, but so far tonight, so good. Here is Cochran again. Going to take a shot on this corner route. Tipped up. Oh, nearly picked. Oh, Ball was looking for another one as Cochran tried to force it to Klein. Yeah, and then the defender celebrates, and I think he knocks Optimus Klein in the chin. Wow. <laughs> ah, that was pretty rough there. Like, uh, Klein looking back at him like maybe he wanted to start something, realize it was just a celebration, but... Actually, I think that was the case, Andy, where two defenders had an opportunity to pick that off, but they kind of ran into each other. I think, Steven, that's what you call a love tap. Shotgun look for Cochran. Three down linemen for Tulsa. Here is Cochran, moves in the pocket, dumps underneath. Oh, dropped by Optimus Klein. You don't see that often. Yeah, but this hadn't been a typical year for Optimus Klein, and that one's certainly catchable. It was a little low. He just didn't bend over enough to try and catch it. Thought he could just really just catch it with his hands in his lap. Uh, but, you know, coming into this game, and correct me if I'm wrong, but according to what I researched, Optimus Klein doesn't have a, a receiving touchdown this season. So what you're saying is this season is not exactly optimal for Optimus. Five, five there wide for Cochran. Here is the underneath throw that is complete to the 22. <laughs> nice catch is made there. And uh, Florida moves the chains. Andy, don't make it easier for the viewers to click off. You know what I mean? Like, the, we're, we're, the, <laughs> we're, the, we're the sports game in town, and they're just like, you know what? I think I could watch another episode of Friends after well, making comments like that. Come on, man. We're better than that. If they like sports, they'll stick around. And if you want to keep up with how players in the league are doing, you can visit simulationfl.net for standings, leaderboards, and sortable team stats. The rookie big board is there, too, if you want to be a superstar. Ron Cochran trying to be a superstar here, and Barry Barkley is a superstar the other way for Tulsa as he picks that one off and brings it back to the 27. Yeah, and Barkley, you know, the recipient of one of those tip passes again, uh, really hits the, def the linebacker there in the hands. Couldn't get the number. Did you get the number, Andy? Uh, I did not. Uh, it was uh, it was in the 40s there. I think it was Gus Jones. Yeah, Gus Jones, inside linebacker, just puts his hands up, has those stone hands, right? Can't bring him down himself, but makes it easier for a teammate. little volleyball action. There. Shotgun look here for Deacon Nickens, who will stand with two receivers to the bottom of the screen and look to fire. Nickens going to take a shot down the field, tipped Ooh. up and incomplete. Ooh, 
nice play there by Evan Carroll to come up and make the hit. And we're seeing some of these traditionally great wide receivers here in this league, like Osai and Optimus Klein. They're missing on easy catches here. So kind of in that lull of the game, it's 7-7. Uh, the defense has been playing well. We've seen the offense do some things, but this in this lull, you know at some point there's going to be a game-breaking play. Heavy backfield here. Looks like this might be a give to Robinson. They will off this right side. Robinson stretching it out. Robinson with a lane. Has the first down before Frank Champion can slow him down enough for some cavalry to get there. He's out to the 40. We've seen that play before, Andy. This time it's successful as the Robinson's able to take advantage of the great blocking in front of him, get to the outside, and what you do, he puts on the, the Jets and uh, gets you that first down. And that will take us to the two-minute warning. Steven, everyone's been knocking on the door, but finding points is harder than finding Easter eggs around Easter. It's 7-7 here, Florida and Tulsa when we return. Andy Hamilton along with Stephen Mullinex, Robert Garrett Jr. in the stats truck for us. Producer Cameron Irvine behind the ones and twos, pushing the buttons and making bad jokes at the break. Two in the backfield for San, for Deacon Nick and Sanzo Robinson dots the eye. Ooh, little shovel to Robinson with room. Robinson threw one for two. Oh, Sanzo Robinson light this field up like a Christmas tree. You got to get your playmakers the ball. You got to find inventive ways to get them the running back and get them involved in your passing game. How about the little shovel pass here? Caught Alaska by surprise, and then boom! The, oh man, the monster truck, and that is Sanzo Robinson just blasting through all those uh, cars on the highway, those innocent cars. <laughs> Two in the backfield here. Robinson there as well, starting to heat up a little bit here in this second quarter. They give to him again, and Robinson falls forward for two. And uh, you know what? No, no, really, there's no pressure here on Tulsa. The clock is ticking, but they, they seem to be satisfied just allowing that clock to run despite having three timeouts. Uh, even though, you know, Andy, they're just right on the edge here of field goal range. If they could just make another maybe eight or nine yards here. It is second and eight. Nine would give him a first down. Nickens going to throw underneath. Wow, great find under pressure by Deacon Nickens. And they will go hurry up. Nickens in the gun again. Four down linemen for the Florida Storm at the 35. Nickens going to throw. Pumps once. Checks underneath. Caught. Nice grab by Mike Osai. And Tulsa takes a timeout with 40 seconds to go. Yeah, and this is setting up really well for Tulsa. You know, running the football, uh, really putting this defense on their heels a bit. And it's opened up things in the passing game. Just a nice little underneath route. Actually kind of using two receivers right. together and a little kind of uh, – designed rub route there but just found them wide open and they're clearly in field goal range now but they're not thinking about three points Andy they're thinking about six well with the way that tonight's gone everyone should be thinking about taking care of the football here on first and ten Nickens pressure coming trying to evade still evade now gonna run with it and wow. Nickens able to get four yeah and uh, did a really nice job of avoiding the rush there and you know what that might be to to Shotgun snap, Nickens underneath, caught, first down turn by Osai, and gets out of bounds with 18 seconds to go. Yeah, the veteran does a nice job, understands the situation, isn't trying to get extra yard, it's really just trying to get out of bounds, stop the clock. He does that, they've got one more chance in my mind to try and get this in the end zone. If they don't on this play, Andy, I think it's going to be a field goal. And I think it's important here for Tulsa to have some underneath routes, maybe some checkdowns for Nickens so that if pressure is coming or he doesn't find the open end zone shot, he checks it down and takes care of this ball to take the lead into the break. 
three wide here. Five-step drop, pumps once, throws a wobbler across the middle. Wobbler or not, it doesn't matter. That swaddle baby is in the crib, and Corey Jones puts Tulsa ahead. Well, here, just a nice little push off a little bit there on the defender. Gets that uh, separation by hooker by crook, I guess. Post drop right down the middle of the field between, again, two defenders. Uh, Nick is unafraid to lace that ball right through that window. And uh, we've got it, uh, we've got six points pending seven here on this uh, extra point try. Well, if we know anything about the Simulation Football League, nothing is guaranteed. Lonzo, Lonzi champion, excuse me, uh, had a block kick on the last time out. This extra point is up and through 14 to seven. Tulsa on top. Well, if, uh, if you want, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, you can follow the SFL on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, and more at SimulationFL. You can send us a tweet tonight or tweet and let your friends know that you found some sports on TV at SimulationFL. Make sure to catch content like the Kramer Show, game highlights, and more by subscribing to our YouTube channel as well so you don't miss a moment of the action when we're not on television. That's at SimulationFL. Return here coming from the Florida Storm. We'll be out to the 27. 10 seconds, I would expect Florida not to really push this ball down the field. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Uh, you know, this is a, 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 a team here in Florida that, that they do run the ball occasionally, but really they like to pass. So maybe they might try to catch them on their heels. I would predict there'd be kind of a fullback run here. Let's run the clock. Let's go in down seven, figure out what to do there at the half, but we'll see what they do. 3-3 look out of Tulsa. Cochran short drop, dumps it out on the outside to Stephen Bush. Bush gets out of bounds there with, I believe, uh, five seconds to go at the 32. Probably looking for a chance there to maybe get something a little bit deeper down the field to try and get them into Hail Mary range. I don't think that they accomplished that as they kind of checked it down there to the little out route, but uh, I fully expect here they'll just run the clock. Do have three timeouts, but with five seconds, the pass would have to be quick and hauled in and be able to call the timeout. Really would have to be a well-oiled machine. They give to Doyle and that, oh, nope, excuse me, spoke too soon there, Stephen. Florida does take a timeout here with three seconds to go. I guess uh, head coach and owner Max Paul would, uh, well, I don't know. He looks a little confused there. Well, I think maybe they're having a discussion there. Yeah, there he is, Cochran. They're going to have a discussion on whether he thinks he has the arm strength to get this one that far down the field. Uh, we're talking about 68 yards at the goal line mark. Uh, let's see what they do. Well, they will uh, set two receivers off to this far hand side. J.W. Doyle in at fullback. They will just give to Doyle. Oh, Doyle almost broke it, Stephen. I, we would have looked like fools had he been able to break <laughs> away from the crowd there. And that will take us to the half. Tulsa able to convert their last drive into points. They have converted all 14 points off of turnovers, and they currently lead at home 14 to 7. And Steven, it was a back and forth first half. Both teams had plenty of chances. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And really thought it bode well for the road team to come here in the Florida Storm to come in. They, they immediately come in and score seven points. And they really felt like the momentum was in their direction. Uh, but then Tulsa comes back with 14 points of their own. Now here an opportunity at home. They'll, they'll kick it off to uh, Florida. Have an opportunity to tie this ball game once again. Every once in a while, Steven, in the Simulation Football League, both coaches decide, you know what? We don't need halftime. We're just going <laughs> to get back out there and get back to work. And tonight, one of those nights here on the nightcap of Week 9. Kick is away from Tulsa. Florida will return down by seven. They will bring it out. Oh, look, look out, a little bit of room, and that return will come out to the 38. Kind of caught me off guard there, Stephen. Robert yeah. Merrill with a nice run. And uh, now we get this Florida offense back on the field. Ron Cochran there in the first half, 21 of 30, 209 yards, one touchdown, three INTs. His main target being Stephen Bush, 109 yards, Nine targets, nine receptions. Two backs in the backfield. Doyle, the fullback, they will dump it out to Doyle on this near side, and J.W. Doyle will pick up 
two. And there is a look at the quarterback comparison. Both have had interesting nights, Stephen, both with a touchdown, both with over 200 yards, and both with at least one pick. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, those, those three interceptions by Cochran, again, that's just kind of how his season's been trending. Uh, but even saying that, even with those three turnovers, they're still only down a touchdown here. So bodes well for Florida, especially if they can score on this drive. Last week, Tulsa outscored Mexico 31 to nothing in this third quarter. They're going to try and maybe do more here. This flip out here for Florida is good, but not good enough for the first down. It'll bring up third and a single yard. And Andy, if you're going to invest in a fullback in this league, which we've had a lot of teams really uh, jump on that uh, train here this season, this is tailor-made for him. Yeah, don't get me started on the uh, fullbacks there, Stephen. Here, here is Doyle, though, breaking away, and he will get out to the 45. It looks like he is just getting started. Well, fullback, I'm going to get into it with you. Fullback has been, was kind of the taste du jour of the draft. We saw a lot of fullbacks taken in that first round, and uh, we've seen a lot of different teams implement them in a lot of different ways, and Alaska really electing to make a fullback their primary runner. Um, whether that's been successful or not can be debated, but uh, certainly something they're trying here in Florida. One in the backfield, two receivers at the bottom of the screen for Cochran. Going to dump it out to Weston off this right-hand side. Weston, a spin move, and he will pick up eight off the dump. Well, if you can get eight yards on first down, you're doing pretty good. And if you can get it from a guy that you you know earlier called a, gen a generic, that's even better. So you got to have those role players on your team to make those kind of plays. It just makes everything easier and opens it up for your star players. Here's a throw from Cochran, this time out to Doyle off this right-hand side, and J.W. Doyle picks up the first down to the 37. And we've seen this from Florida all game long. They will just take whatever Tulsa gives them. They'll take those little short outs. They'll throw to the running back. They'll throw to the fullback. And when they've tempted to go deeper down the field, we've seen interceptions, we've seen tip balls, but we've also seen them complete passes. So, you know, uh, well, it's interesting to see how they move forward if Cochran is pressed to really get them back into this game down more than seven. Shotgun snap, Cochran going to flow. Oh, one-handed grab, and he is going to waltz into the end zone. What a play. I don't believe it. Optimus Klein. And Klein does a really good job here. Has to really spin. Whoa, 360 spin to catch this ball. Know where he is on the field and get past the defender and get into the end zone. Just a, a great display of his athleticism. And uh, really, I don't know how he found the ball. I'd be so dizzy trying to find the ball, making that kind of a spin. Steven, I could be wrong. I think they call that a pirouette in ballet. Don't ask Ooh. me how I know. Mm. Um, but, but, <laughs> but childhood either. stories, huh? Yeah, well, no, not for me. Uh, <laughs> extra point is up and good from Ethan Sneed. And we, Stephen, are all nodded back up at 14. 8.46 to go in the third. Andy Hamilton and Stephen Mullinex on 11 Sports and for the fans. Florida gives it to Optimus Klein, and he is able to convert the catch into points. And now we are tied at 14 with 8.46 to go in the third week nine simulation football league action as we near the playoff race. Every single game is vital. And Charles Ball brings this return out to the 28 with 8.41 to go. And Tulsa, when you look at their scoring defense so far, Stephen, they are 10th uh, in the league this season. They have improved a little bit over the last two seasons. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that this season's been their, their best here in the last four seasons, aver averaging, allowing only 23 points a game from their opponents. And 
just shows that they've been steadily improving as they've been here in the league. Here's the handoff to Robinson. Robinson will get nowhere, but when you look at their defense tonight, Stephen, a couple takeaways, they've done pretty well for themselves. Yeah, they have, and, uh, you know, they've, they've just done a good job overall. Uh, you know, I think that there's certainly things that you can be critical of in this game, but I think they've played really well, and they just things haven't gone their way in certain situations. They haven't been taking advantage, total advantage of all the turnovers that Cochran has thrown. But, but uh, again, 14-14 fourteen to 14 against a three-time champion like the Florida Storm is pretty good. Nickens' out route is caught on the top side, turning up field for the first down. Beautiful catch and run there made by Corey Jones. Yeah, and this combination of Osai and Corey Jones is really I found something, you know, coming in this game five and three, have won four of their last five games. They have been really feeling themselves, and for good reason, that combo of those two really top wide receivers uh, been terrific. Nickens, ooh, going to get dropped there. Florida brought the pressure, and uh, Stephen, do you know who that man is? Yeah, I believe that's Big Sexy. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> and uh, again, you know, this is going to bring theme here uh, tonight at those defensive ends crashing in and beating these outside tackles there. Really, the entire defensive line got great push from their interior as well, and Nickens really just didn't have time to wait for his receivers to get open. We'll set them up for second and 16. Nickens going to throw, dumps underneath, and that's a good job of getting a couple yards and making it a more manageable third down. Yeah, you might think that Nickens, you know, is kind of start seeing some ghosts out there. I mean, it's been sacked so much in this game. Uh, you think that maybe he might be a little gun shy, but that's not this dude. This dude is calm. This dude is a killer. He will absolutely, he's not, he's, he has no fear and will absolutely throw the ball down the field in tight windows. He's going to have to throw it down the field here. Five wide for Nickens. Pressure coming. Unloads. Oh, oh caught on this left side. Wow, what a grab and what a play for Tulsa. They strike big on third and long and convert to Corey Jones. Got to love it when a plan comes together. And just like that, uh, Nickens rises to the occasion, was sacked on the previous play, uh, two plays ago, excuse me, but here, just as cool as the other side of the pillow and delivers a perfect ball that allows the receiver to get those precious yak yards. It's my favorite type of yard, Steven. <laughs> yards after catch yards? I agree. Oh, I thought you meant like a yak like you would see in the mountains. Never mind. <laughs> first, first and 10 from the 24. 6.23 to go here in the third. Andy Hamilton along with Steven Mullinex. Hand off inside for Sanzo Robinson, and he picks up nine to the 15. You know, there's just something to Sanzo Robinson's game. You know, is it speed? Is it power? It's just that rare combina combination of both. And, you know, just for instance, that's just a perfect example of what makes him different. It just looks like he's running regular speed, and suddenly he's gliding for nine yards. Nickens in the shotgun, two receivers wide, going to throw. Here is Nickens' pressure coming. Ooh, unloads just in time. Alex Dominguez would have floated away like a balloon with how big his head would have got had he made that sack. Yeah, I'd be in the hospital for a week if uh, Dominguez unloaded on. I mean, that's just some hits the quarterback has taken, but Deacon Nickens right. standing in there, standing tall. Uh, doesn't That doesn't seem to shake him. Just a five-year veteran. Um you know, like he did on in the on the previous uh, third down conversion, he's unafraid. I am terrified, and I'm all the way up here in the booth. Here's the handoff to Robinson, and he will not get there. Oh, a stop. yard shy, and that will set them up at the 15. Steven, do you think about going for this one? Yeah, I absolutely do. You know, I know three points will give you the lead, uh, but uh, if you can get this conversion, you're so close here to scoring a touchdown. They're going to settle for the field goal. They will set up champion. He was blocked on an earlier attempt, and he will get this one away. Good kick, and it is good from 32. Tulsa regains the lead, 17-14. And that's why I'm up here in the booth. They make those calls. It's the right call to give them points. They take
Three points separate these two teams, and we will be brought back to you after the separation at the break. Tulsa back here in their home stadium here in Oklahoma at 5-3 and three on top of the Florida Storm who sit at 2-6. and six. Only three points, though, separate these two teams. Return here coming for Florida. Spin cycle will get them out to the 26. And, Stephen, the Simulation Football League, a great opportunity uh, during these very uh, controversial times where health is of the utmost importance to everyone, and we're glad we can provide some entertainment and some sports for uh, anyone who needs them. Yeah, and this is the you know the 14th season here in the SFL, so providing this level of entertainment for a while. Flag on the play. Cochran will dump it off to J.W. Doyle, who steps out at the 26, and we will check with Ref 62 to see. I believe it might have been offsides. Ref will give us the offsides call. Yep, absolutely. And it'll be a against the Tulsa Desperados, obviously there, Stephen. Chris Andrews is the one they're going to call it on. Well, you know, on the last drive, uh, this Tulsa defense gave up a touchdown. So, you know, you want to do everything you can to try and prevent that. Um, clearly, that on that play, making those kind of mistakes, just really handing them free yards. Looking to throw. Cochran, shot taken. Oh. oh, shot deflected. And I tell you what, man, Charles Ball has been all over this field tonight. He has, um, you know, and able to get a piece of the, the whole thing. There, an optimist Klein really had an opportunity to catch that ball off the bounce, but had turned his body away from it. Probably wished he hadn't have done that. Might have had an opportunity to bring that one in, and that'd be six. Instead, it'll set him up for second and five at their own 31. Cochran takes a deep drop, and he will get dropped himself. Able to avoid it at first, but not able to avoid the second wave. Chris Andrews, the rookie, makes up for his offsides earlier on this drive. You're right, Andy. Cochran able to really make a nice little move right there to get away, but then for some inexplicable reason, actually steps into the pass rusher and making that a worse hit than it probably would have been. Shotgun look here, five wide, third and a country mile. Here is Nickens, gonna take a deep shot down the middle, caught! Ooh, Ron Cochran thrives under pressure and he gets it out to the 48, Stephen Bush tonight. Yeah, and they do a good job here scheme-wise. They just really spread this out five wide, just, put, just two, puts too many receivers out on the field for Tulsa to cover. Somebody comes open and it's Stephen Bush, probably the one guy you don't wanna come over. That will set them up here, two in the backfield. Split backs for Ron Cochran. He will look to throw. Cochran going to dump it out on this near side. That is caught for two yards to midfield to J.W. Doyle. Yeah, and I believe that's a design play there for either the running back or the fullback to get the ball on a nice little flat route there. And uh, um, just, to, again, they just do a good job of mixing up going down the field, those little out routes, and getting their receivers, uh, their, excuse me, their running backs involved as receivers. Here is the handoff up the middle. J.W. Doyle will pick up another couple. It'll bring up third and four. Steven, on third and four, you run or pass here? Yeah, this is a pass-first team here for the Storm, and, and the way that they've been given, really, the freedom to get those little short outs, I would expect to pass probably to be a short out, but you never know. They may want to strike a home run. Here is the throw from Cochran. Cochran going to dump underneath. Ooh, dropped. 
J.W. Doyle could not hold on fourth and four. Yeah, I just think it's a bad play call on there. Just uh, you're, you're, you're looking for your fullback on one of those short out, uh, out routes. But again, he's just really blanket coverage on him there. Didn't have the speed to separate and uh, just couldn't bring the ball in. Marcus Agrippa, the punter, the rookie punter, 5'11", 200 pounds on tonight. This will be his first punt of the night, I believe, Stephen, and he yeah. will kick it away, trying to angle it towards this near sideline and pin Tulsa deep. Oh, good punt, but not enough. It's going to go into the back of the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Tulsa takes back over with a three-point lead, trying to protect it or extend it. Florida Storm and Tulsa Desperados will be right back on 11 Sports and for the fans. First and 10 back here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Simulation Football League Week 9 action. We will continue through weeks 10, 11, 12, and into the playoffs this season. So if you're looking for sports, stick around and give us a follow. Here's the handoff to Sanzo Robinson. Ooh, stiff arm of doom made of Teflon, and he's out to the 36. Well, this is, again, that strong power eye formation to get those uh, multiple blockers in front of Sanzo Roberts, and they just did a great job, of, again, of just picking up those defenders. And then you get one-on-one -on -one with Robinson after the freight train has picked up speed and actually, actually puts somebody down on the ground right there just using that power and that strength that he has. What a combination of skills. We'll set up first and 10 at the 36. Three receivers wide, just under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Nickens, pressure coming, has one load, caught underneath, first down, and he pays the price for it at the 48. And just another one of those underneath routes. They just run the receivers down the field, and then they bring in Vasquez, their fullback. He just kind of finds a nice little soft opening there underneath those routes, and he's wide open, but you got to trust him to try and make those catches, bring it in, and then, of course, he's got that 6'2", 245 frame to take that pounding. First catch of the night for Javier Vasquez, a valued member of the Simulation Football League, as is all of our members. Here is Robinson, who will get another carry and trying to fight off Storm members, does end up picking up five, little slow to get up there. Yeah, he's, you know, he finishes those runnings, you know, like a hammer on a nail times. And so he's going to take, there's going to be some wear and tear on that. Body. As this game progresses, though, I think they're going to lean on him a little bit more to try and salt away this game. Not sure they can do that here in this situation, but uh, in the fourth quarter, certainly we'll be calling his number a lot. Nickens under center, two backs in the backfield. Give to Robinson again off this near side. Ooh, block did not develop. It was there. 74 was there, but just could not make the block there for Tulsa. Would have been close. And I think we're just seeing a tired Sanzo Robinson here. Um, just uh, a lot of snaps in this game. Uh, haven't really, didn't really use him much there at the, when, at the start of the game, but has been using him a lot here lately. Shotgun look here for Deacon Nickens. High snap, corrals it, is able to sling. Ooh, they're going to mark him out of bounds. Steven, might be time for that red handkerchief. Yeah, and you know what? This is uh, this is because Robinson just looked so sluggish there on the previous play. They they decide to pass it on third down, take the chance right there at the out-of-bounds marker, and I don't think they're challenging this one. I think they should. Well, I tell you what, I've thrown pretty much everything I got up here in the booth out onto the field. <laughs> Hasn't stopped play whatsoever, but they'll bring out the, the punter anyways, Cortland Weaver, who will kick this one away on fourth and one. Punt is angled towards this near side of the field. Fair catch called for at the 10, no, excuse me, the 11, and that is where the Florida Storm bring their offense back out. 16 seconds to go here in the third. A tight one, Stephen. Yeah, and, and you know what, if you're, 
uh, if you're the Florida Storm, an opportunity here to get back in this game. Your defense does a good job of stopping the offense there and causing that fourth down. Now you've got to capitalize on it, especially as we edge near to the fourth quarter. Here's a handoff up the middle, and J.W. Doyle picks up four, getting out to the 15. Yeah, and got to get out of the shadow of your own uh, uh, field goal there. Uh, <laughs> I've lost the word. Hey, I tell you what, in a game this close, words sometimes are hard. And you know what else <laughs> is hard? Trying to extend and or overcome a three-point deficit. Three points separate these teams. We'll be right back. Goal post. Scenes back here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. A three-point lead for the hometown Desperados. Four yards on first down for Florida. They are going to try and continue this drive. Here's the handoff up the middle. That was to J.W. Doyle, and he got stonewalled right there, Stephen. Goal post. Yeah, he did. Absolutely. Um, they're third, causing this third and five, but you know that's what you get with uh, kind of running your fullback as your main running back. You're going to get those times where he's just trying to plow right through the middle of the defensive line and get stood up. Jaden Swift was in on that stop. Here is Ron Cochran. Stands well protected in the pocket. Oh, somehow laced it to Robert Merrill. His first grab of the night, Stephen, and what a time to make it. No, it yeah. was dropped. How? Yeah, incomplete. I think the defender kind of obscured our view there for a second. Actually had the ball in his hand, and as he turned, he lost the grip of the ball and dropped it on the ground. Wow, I am uh, flabbergasted. I, I, don't, I don't know whether I was trying to say goalpost or what, but that looked like a catch to me. And unfortunately, the Florida Storm are going to have to punt this one away. Marcus Agrippa, only the second time he's been on the field tonight, kicks it away and Tulsa has Charles Ball back, who will return it out for a couple yards. And, Stephen, that reminds me of a good story about a punter I once heard. Uh, the punter was signing with a with a new team, and he shook the coach's hand and said, the coach said, are you happy to be here? He said, yeah, I'm happy to be here. And he said, but, coach, I tell you what, I hope I never play a down for you. Because he, he was the punter, and uh, if he never played a down, they would score a lot of points. You guys will think about it. You'll get it. Two backs in the backfield. Robinson, the far back, 
And Deacon Nickens will dump this one off short, and it will be, oh, first down, nice yeah. determination. Yeah, sorry, leave you hanging there, Andy. I was just waiting. Um, yeah, no, just a, an opportunity here for the Tulsa really to take control of this game even more. Only up by three, one score game. They can try to put as much distance as they can from Florida. This is traditionally a Storm team that has come up big late in game. So talked about that at the beginning of the game, and it's uh, actually coming to, to uh, fruition here. Nickens comes to fruition on that throw down to the 21. What a laced pass to Corey Jones. And again, this combination of Corey Jones and Mike Ostai has just really come to play tonight. And Nickens uh, really all, attacking all three levels of the defense. Uh, is just got the just kind of the the strong arm, that laser accuracy that you want out of a prototypical quarterback with the, the, the guy who doesn't fear to throw any of those passes as well. Nickens to throw, floats this one backside, oh. picked, picked down the far sideline, going back the other way. Oh, and brought down from behind at the 43, but the interception and damage is done. Pick made by Ryan Davidson. Yeah, Nickens looking for McCall and the bounds line. And boy, how did Davidson not go out of bounds? Just did a really great job of wrangling that, that interception in and taking off down the field. But man, McCall saving a touchdown right there and putting back the Florida Storm on the field. Storm still down by three. Cochran to throw, floats one. Wow, wide open underneath Stephen Bush. And uh, Mr. Mullinex, this his best season of his career after the catches he's made tonight. Yeah, you know you're wide open when the guy closest to you is the referee. I mean, when the ump's the guy that's covering you, you're probably going to catch the ball. And I'm not sure what happened there in the secondary. Now we get a look at two good receivers for these teams, Osai and Bush. And like I said, Bush with that 943 and the yardage he has tonight, 150 yards on 11 catches, the best season of his career. They float and they get more from him. Steven Bush down to the 15. He is a weapon. Yeah, to me, it's all about the pass. Really, the, the touch to drop it over those second-level defenders it's something that Ron Cochran has made a career. There's probably no single player in the SFL that has that kind of touch. And Big Sexy gives him a knuckle bump on the sidelines. Man, I tell you what, Steven, I wish I was cool enough to get a knuckle bump from Big Sexy. You're not. No, he just tries to tackle me, and I'm not even a quarterback. Here is Cochran looking to throw, dumps it out to Weston on this near side. Weston has the first down yardage to the five. Man, and uh, again, we saw in that first half, an interception changed the momentum in Tulsa's direction, and we're seeing an interception here change the momentum now to Florida's direction. So really some key turnovers causing these offenses to come to life. Here is Cochran going to sling it. Cochran, near side, caught, touchdown, E.J. Minson, his second of the game, and it puts Florida back in front. And Andy, this is the third time they looked Minson's way in the end zone. No wonder he came into this game with five touchdowns, leaving, leaving, uh, leading the team there and receiving touchdowns. But here, just find him in the corner of the end zone, able to get his little tippy toes there in bounds. Four plays, 57 yards off the Ryan Davidson interception and a five-yard touchdown pass from Ron Cochran to E.J. Minson. Caps the drive. And Florida will send on Ethan Sneed to try and increase the lead to four. Kick on the way and good. It's 21 to 17 with 7.46 to go. We'll step aside and be right back. The Simulation Football League on 11 Sports and for the fans.
We have flipped the scoreboard. If you stepped away for a minute, you got to stop doing that. It's 21-17 now. The Florida Storm on top of the Tulsa Desperados by four. 7.46 to go. Andy Hamilton along with Stephen Mullinax in the booth with you here on this fine Tuesday evening. Here is the return from Charles Ball. Ball going to adjust. And, man, any time he redirects himself on these returns, it gets a little dangerous. Yeah, and you know what? Those are the kind of plays that Charles Ball's known for making there as a special teams returner. He's an absolute threat to take it all the way to the house at any point. So you've got to be on your P's and Q's if you're the special teams unit for Florida. Under center is Deacon Nickens, 7.42 to go. Here is Nickens dropping to throw. Will dump it off to Robinson. Robinson with room and a first down out to the 47. Nice little pitch and catch. Yeah, and we talked about how Sanzo Robinson really hasn't been used in the passing game much, but in this game comes in now off that, making his fifth reception in this game, 53 yards, and has that receiving touchdown earlier in this game. First and 10 from the 47. If you want to get involved in the Simulation Football League, you can head over to simulationfl.net or you can type in your browser simulation.football, hit enter, and we will get you involved. You can create a player, maybe a team owner one day. You know, you can potentially apply to be a broadcaster like Steven and I. You can get involved in social media, the beat writing team. Incredible and endless opportunities. Yeah, and, and really a rare opportunity to, to, you know, be on television, be on Twitch. These games that entertain so many people and bring so much joy to a lot of people. Shotgun snap here for Nickens on second and 11. Fires deep down the field. Completes deep down the field to the 27. Mike Osai. And Deacon Nickens absolutely puts a little extra mucker, uh, mustard on that throw there. <laughs> Uh, finding Osai down the middle of the field. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. I was just going to say, I, I could you run down to the uh, concession stand and get me a hot dog with muckered on it? <laughs> four, I, deserve four, it. I deserve it. <laughs> four, four receivers wide here for Nickens. Going to take a deep drop. Fires deep down the field. Caught. Wow, look at the muckered on that pass. <laughs> And uh, that's Anthony, Anthony Mosley there on the reception in the middle of the field. Again, just a slant route right down the middle of the field. They found something soft here uh, right there, and they're taking full advantage of it, something that uh, the Florida Storm are going to have to fix. Well, for those of you who may think I'm being mean to Steven, we have uh, known each <laughs> other for so many years here in the Simulation Football League and actually met at the SFL convention, the first yeah. one that we had. We're going to have another one this summer in Jacksonville, Florida. If you are in the area, please come by. We would love to meet you. Here is Nickens going to fire to this near side. Caught! Touchdown! Ooh, who are you going to call? McCall! Touchdown, Desperados! Well, the young man had a little prediction about what he was going to do in this game. Boy, he has come to play. So it disappeared a little bit there in the middle of this game, but, man... No bigger catch than that one in the end zone to give his team the two-point lead, pending this extra point, possibly a three-point lead. A five-play, 70-yard drive is capped off by Jacob McCall. And Tulsa, with this Lonzi champion kick, will extend the lead as long as it's through, and it is two, three, 24, 21, 554. And Stephen, if I had to fathom a guess i would guess we haven't finished the scoring tonight no you know what it's really ramped up as this game has been going i guess maybe you know the defense is getting a little bit more tired certainly came to play early in this game it was seven to seven for such a long time but we've seen this influx of scoring and and uh you know this is just i think going to go right down to the wire which may not favor tulsa the way Florida's history has been in tight games, pulling out really great last-minute victories. First and 10 at the 23 is where Merrill will set up this Florida Storm offense. And uh, with 5.50 to go, man, these teams are battling back and forth, and it just goes to show you, Stephen, how close this playoff race is. Teams that are 2-6 and six are battling with teams that are 5-3. and three. Yeah, it's still so, you know, at the point of the season where even the guys that are 
bottom of the standings still have a chance. Snap here to Ron Cochran. We'll fire it down to this near side. Stephen Bush gets five more yards there. His 12th catch of the day hasn't dropped one of them. No, and, and as you mentioned before, you know, a lot of them have been catches, but we've seen him make some spectacular ones as well. And just really coming through for his quarterback, his offense, certainly going to need him here. Remember, they're, they're on the road here in Tulsa, so uh, they're going to just need to really gather together here down three to try and win this game with almost just, uh, just over five minutes left in the game. Oh, ooh. Absolutely crushed in the backfield. An amazing hit from DJ Majesty made J.W. Doyle look like an empty can of Coca-Cola there. Yeah, and they're really making it easy for the defensive coordinator. They know that if they're going to, it's going to be down the middle and with their fullback. So uh, if they sense the run, they know exactly where to go. Cochran fires. Wow, what a completion. Down to the 43, a lightning throw to Optimus Klein. Yeah, and what really amazed me is how quick Klein got off the line of scrimmage. It looked like he was in position to catch the ball in such a in a flash, really, and wide open as the defender gives him a lot of respect, playing a good 10, 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. Time ticking away here, 445 and clicking, although it doesn't feel like an urgent game because Florida could knot it up with a field goal here as long as they take care of the football. Here is Cochran taking the snap, fires underneath, caught by Stephen Bush. That play is good for five or six yards every single time. Yeah, and you talked about how Stephen Bush has been consistent. That's his 14th reception off 14 targets. In comparison, Optimus Klein has been targeted 13 times, but has only been able to come away with six of those catches. Ron Cochran tonight completing 75% of his passes, eight yards per attempt, three touchdowns, three picks. Trying to will his team back, he will throw again, and another completion out to this top side of the 45, right in front of Max Paul, Optimus Klein getting involved. Well, Andy, they are moving the ball with regularity, but they're also using up this clock. They may be thinking let's get in the end zone but not give Tulsa uh, the, the opportunity to get back on the field offensively or give them as little amount of time as possible. Optimus Klein. Well, here's the throw from Cochran. Underneath, caught. First down play to Robert Merrill there at the 32. It was a nice slant. Oh, well, and it works. It really works. I mean, like clockwork. And that tackle was made by Barry Barkley there. And Barkley, with the interception earlier, added to the third most interceptions in the league. Yeah, a guy that's typically dangerous. We just haven't really called his name much in this game. That could change. Here is Cochran to throw. Out route there is caught by Optimus Klein. Klein going to turn up field, pick up seven or eight. And it was interesting, Stephen, when I was doing my background work, Klein, the only time this season he's gone over 100 yards was last week against the Vancouver Legion. He's nearing that total now, now up close to around 95 yards. Lining up here, they will give up the middle to Doyle. Ooh, J.W. Doyle. Steven, did you call for a moving truck because you just got ran over on the defensive side? <laughs> And uh, you know what? That's the benefit of having, you know, and the luxury of having that fullback is that at times that he's going to be able to be that short yarded specialist for you, get those first downs and those goal line plays. Shotgun look here for Ron Cochran, changing the play at the line. Cochran going to fire, slings across the middle, caught, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. They retake the lead here late. E.J. Minson, a hat trick for the tight end. Well, all E.J. Minson does is score touchdowns. Three touchdowns in this game so far. Been targeted in the end zone four times uh, out of his five total targets. So, this is a guy that they look for in the end zone. Cochran has really relied on him. Now a whopping eight touchdowns this season. By far the leader on this team. Mismatch Minson able to put 
Florida up by three with an extra point on the way. An attempt on the way. Ooh, kick almost blocked. It is up and through. 28-24. Four-point lead for the Storm, but Tulsa 237 on the clock and all three timeouts. Maybe left just a little bit too much time for Deacon Nickens in this high-powered offense. Uh, you know, I, again, Nickens is a gambler. This is a guy that's going to throw the ball deep, find that accuracy. And, Tulsa uh, currently yeah, please in... Go ahead. Sorry, Tulsa currently in the playoff hunt there, as you see on your screen, trying to hold on to the spot as the Gladiators in Fury try and hop ahead along with Mexico City. Here is the return from Ball up to the 28. So as we're in week nine, for those of you who are new to the Simulation Football League, next week starts week 10. And from there, only three more games for each team before we hit playoff time. The top 10 teams in the Simulation Football League, make the playoffs. That's half the league. And then we get rolling. And I tell you what, Stephen, nothing is more exciting than a playoff bracket. I absolutely agree. One in the backfield here for Nickens to throw. Nickens going to float a wobbler down the field. Oh, diving attempt from Florida. They were trying to take it away and ice the game. They could not get a hand on it. Yeah, there was just a, really a duck right off the hand of Deacon Nickens there, feeling the pressure. As, uh, uh, again, those defensive ends continue to win the battles with tackles. And um, it's something that they've been battling back and forth all night. A good battle in the trenches. Under center, four receivers wide here for Deacon Nickens from the 28. Nickens going to take a seven-step drop. Short throw here. Caught underneath for seven. Now they will go hurry up. Same formation, Nick and shorter drop this time. Quick throw, bobbled around, ooh, falls to the turf harmlessly, but it sat in the air for a little bit, was trying to find Mosley. Yeah, the defender did just a great job of really um, boosting himself right in the midst of that passing lane, knocking the ball away, tipped up, had an opportunity to be intercepted, lucky it wasn't. Big decision here on this side of the two-minute warning. They could punt it away with all three timeouts, only down by four. If they could hold Florida to a field goal, they could get the ball back, but they elect to go for it or at least keep the offense out for now on fourth and three. They will snap it to Nickens. Nickens pressure coming. Can't evade. Florida, a sack to put this thing away. Alessandro Tomaello, his third of the game, and this one might be on ice. Yeah, and the defensive ends, they, they, they rear their ugly heads again for the Tulsa fans. It's, boy, these this combination... Of, of pass rushers has absolutely controlled this game at times, and they might have just sealed the win, Andy. Tulsa, though, does have three timeouts and the two-minute warning. If they could hold Florida to three here, they potentially would have the opportunity to go down the field and tie. Cochran under center gives to Weston. Ooh, Weston crushed on the defensive side by Chris Andrews, and that will take us to the two-minute warning. Four points separate these two teams. This is far from over. Don't change a thing. Florida and Tulsa when we return. Back here, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Andy Hamilton along with Stephen Mullinex, Robert Garrett Jr. in the stats truck. Cameron Irvine pushing the ones and twos, producing tonight's game. Simulation Football League, one of the only sports still active and 100% operational. And Florida trying to keep their offense operational here. Here is Cochran to throw. Pressure coming, does get rid of it. Out to Weston. Weston turns the corner. Weston, first down for Florida. Well, they have called Weston's number here, and he has come through with flying colors. They they let him be a running back, actually, and run him down the middle of that line, and then they go to him as a receiver, but he's kind of a duck of a pass there as well, but 
able to bring it in and get that first down through just heart and determination. Did step out of bounds, so Tulsa keeps all their timeouts. So still potentially with an opportunity to get the ball back, that a big play there for um, Tulsa. Consider All things considered, they give up the first down, but don't give up too much time. Cochran to throw again, floats back in the end zone, picked! Picked by Charles Ball! Tulsa's not done yet! Do not ring the dinner bell! The Desperados get the ball back! Andy, I have no idea what Florida is thinking in this situation. Have an opportunity to take the time out away from Tulsa, but they're in, they right. start in shotgun and throw the ball, trying to go for it all, and they get picked off. Max Paul in the FTF Next chat on twitch.tv backslash FTF Next just said, why are we throwing? And uh, not a good time. Here is Nickens going to try and will his team back into this one. Out route caught, turning up field, short of the sticks. They will run hurry up. Catch was made by Corey Jones. Bunch formation again. Florida playing press. This could spell bad with a double move. Nickens dumps it out to Robinson. Ooh, Robinson couldn't keep the feet. Steps out of bounds at the 13. Well, a bit of a mixed blessing there. It gives them an opportunity at least to stop the clock and get a new, you know, new set of plays in. Take a breath. Realize it's third and three. Let's go ahead and get this first down. We've still got all of our timeouts. Plenty of time on the clock to to move the ball down the field. Shotgun look here, four wide for Nickens. Sanzo Robinson, sidecar right. Third and three with a minute and a half to go. All three timeouts for the Desperados. Nickens to throw, pressure coming, has to get rid of it. Fires picked! Picked by Evan Carroll, and Florida might take this one all the way down to the 22. Evan Carroll reignites the storm. Yeah, and again, Deacon Nickens with pressure in his face, I believe delivers the ball just a little bit earlier than two, and that just resulted in the, in the ball being just a little bit uh, behind, giving the defender an opportunity to pick that one off. Wow. Again, three timeouts for Tulsa, it minute 20. Situation. There's a lot of time left, I'm yep. just saying. And Florida is going to line up with two in the backfield. It looks like they might have got smarter and decided to potentially run the ball here, maybe taking the word to Max Paul in the chat. Hand off Doyle. Doyle, first down and more. Ooh, hoo, hoo. down to the seven. And, uh, the, you know, this is a great time for Doyle to have his best run of the game right here to try and ice this one. And it's going to use up a timeout here for Tulsa. Still has got two remaining. But uh, the, 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 the chances for Tulsa are dwindling. Well, with a four-point lead, Tulsa has to hold them to a field goal here. A touchdown would put this game away. First and goal at the seven. Split back, Joker's formation. 4-3 look out of Tulsa with a cornerback walked up into the box. Cochran under center, gives up the middle. Little shake and bake. Doyle brought down at the three, dragged down by the shoelace. Yeah, the running, uh, excuse me, the fullback there doing a little dance dance revolution there in the middle of the field. Uh, I think he's uh, absolutely feeling himself right now. Wouldn't be surprised if they don't call his number again and he gets this one in the end zone. Since the pick, though, Stephen, eight seconds have come off the clock. Plenty of time. Split backs, Jokers again. Goal line formation, this time out of Tulsa. They have five on the line expecting the run. Hand off Doyle. Doyle won't get there. Third and goal. They brought him down at the one. Well, Tulsa's defense has done just enough here to earn them one final opportunity to stop Alaska from getting in the end zone and to keep this a one-score game. This is, this is for the ball game right here, ladies and gentlemen. Defense chant going around here at the Dome. Oh, Alaska, are they going to take a knee here, Stephen? With 109 left, they are going to fold on the play, take a knee, take time off the clock, and kick the field goal. This is an absolute mental collapse here. I don't know what the head coach is thinking calling this. This makes absolutely no sense, Andy. Oh my goodness, we've seen one block kick. One here would set the roof on fire in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Ethan Sneed is on the third round rookie pick. Pick number 50 overall. 
will line this one up. They'll be about an 18-yard chip shot. They will let all the time they can wind off the clock. Down to two, a little bit of a low snap, kick on the way, and it is good. So it's 31-24, Tulsa down by seven, but still in this game with 27 seconds. Just one game-breaking play, and oh, by the way, who's the kickoff returner? Charles Ball. Right, just one of the more dangerous return men in the league. No worries here. I tell you what, Stephen, have your thumbs on uh, standby because this might be Heartburn City. Roger here that. is Charles Ball back to return. He will bring this thing out across the 25. Shake and bake. Oh, Charles Ball. Man, I tell you what, Stephen. Yeah, I was ready to put that Tums on my tongue there. That was uh, <laughs> nearly time to go nuts. But look here, 23 seconds, one big play. That's what you're looking for, one deep play. You know, they might possibly try to look for something short to try and make it a little bit more manageable of a Hail Mary play, but I think they're just looking for a game breaker here. Four wide, Nickens in the gun, man coverage. Nickens pressure dropped. Nickens will get sacked. Lion on the play, and it will set them up. They're going to have to go hurry up. Mm -hmm. Four wide again. Pressure coming again. Nickens stands. Going to float this one across the middle. Caught! Oh, oh, oh. oh! He's off to the races. Will he get there? No, it doesn't look like he has the speed. Time's going to expire. Oh, no. one tackle ends the game. Oh. It was underneath to Aaron King, and he could not get to the end zone. And Florida survives in Tulsa. And it's a play that never should have happened, Andy. And, uh, uh, you know, Florida does their own. Uh, really put it, taking a knee on that third down and and just gave that opportunity to Tulsa to make that play. And if one guy misses a tackle, we're talking about a tied ball game here going to overtime. What a way to end a game. And I tell you what, Stephen, for all the game planning and team building these teams do in the offseason, Aaron King, a generic receiver with that last catch, if Tulsa would have had four star receivers, potentially could have been off to the races and going to overtime here. Just goes to show you the margin of error in this league. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And then the fact that those generic players, they can make an impact. Different saw a lot of that in today's game, but you know, these star players, you've got to give them a hand. What a terrific performance from both teams tonight. And, uh, man, what a heck of a game to bring our audience, you know, uh, the turnovers like the one that we're seeing here on the screen, really changing the momentum of both sides. And I think this is a, a game that could be told through those two key turnovers and how it affected and impacted the offense and, and how they scored off those takeaways. And, and for you know Florida struggling coming into this game having lost four out of their last five to come in to a hot Tulsa team and get a win a big victory for this franchise if you want to make an impact on the simulation football league you can claim your spot in the minor league you can begin your SFL career subscriptions are going fast for the inaugural kickoff in April all you have to do is head to simulation.football, simulationfl.net, or follow us on any of our social media at simulationfl. We will have games coming to you next weekend for week 10. You won't want to miss out on the action. We have content coming throughout the week. The best football league on the internet currently playing games still excites us down to the last second, and it shows here tonight with an incredible game from blocked kicks to potential almost game-winning or game-tying touchdown catches to interceptions. We saw a little bit of everything, Steven. If you had to pick, who is your player of the game? Who you got? And be quick. Uh, uh, Dominguez, but it's going to be Cochran. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> so close. You almost got the musket right on that hot dog. Ed Ron Cochran is your player of the game. Four touchdowns, including the game winner, three of which went to EJ Minson. That's all for us. It's the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports. Check us out at Simulation FL. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And we will see you next weekend for Week 10. Go Post.